Hey there, it's been a while. But I'm back with a video that I hope lives up to some expectations that I've set for it in my mind. I hope this is a video that you guys enjoy as well. Judging by the title of this video, you already know we're talking about what happens when you've got really bad gas in prison. Folks, this could lead to a boatload of problems for you. Passing gas at the wrong time in the wrong place around the wrong people could get your ass kicked. And I've somewhat seen that happen as I'm getting ready to share with you. I want to say that I'll never forget, but maybe I did forget for a long time. Anyways, this is somewhat of a prison story also. You know, I can remember when I first got arrested, one of many times, going to classification. And classification is one of the very first cell blocks that you're going to end up in when they're trying to figure out where they're going to put you in the jail. Now, in classification, you could be housed in there with a cellmate, and oftentimes while I was there, I was in there with a cellmate as well. And you never know who you're going to end up in that cell with. You could be in there with a veteran, an OG, somebody who has been down numerous times. This is not their first rodeo. Or you could be in there with somebody who has never been locked up before. I mean, you're just getting to jail. Imagine this. Let's say you're somebody who's been to jail a time or two in the past and you go to classification and they put you in a cell with somebody who has never been locked up before. They could be in there crying, bitching. I just want to go home. Why won't my mom answer the phone? Imagine that. You already know you're probably going to be in there for a while and here you are in there with some short-timing newcomer, somebody who's never been locked up before, who has a potential of going home. All they need is mommy to answer the phone and post that bail. From day one, your time can get off to a real rocky and rough start. But also while in classification, that's when you're first going to begin eating that jail food, that processed, nasty bullshit that they're going to be serving to you. Whether we're talking about the boot heel, the cow tongue, the meat rock, whether we're talking about the SOS gravy, the shit on a shingle, whether we're talking about those donkey dicks, prison DOC sausages, all of that processed Department of Corrections goodness. And you know, at first you may not want to eat that food, but... Eventually, you're going to get hungry enough that where you will. And once you begin to eat that food, boy, your stomach's going to be doing somersaults, getting used to trying to process all of that processed BS coming through the tray slot. And it's while your body's trying to adjust to this, maybe even fend off whatever this food is doing to your insides, that you could end up with a real nasty case of some real bad gas. And there ain't nothing like being confined, locked in a cell with somebody else and you've got the worst case of the bubble guts and just bad gas. And you can't help but to have to pass that bad gas. You know, I'll never forget when I was a child, my mother told me a couple of things that stuck with me, one of which was if you eat more than 12 hot dogs in one sitting, your eyeballs would pop out. I would learn from hot dog eating contests that, well, that wasn't true. But also I was told as a youngster that if you hold on to that gas that's inside of you and you don't release that, you could implode like a Titan submersible. Probably not a really good analogy right there. You know, you don't really ever want to have to hold on to that gas. You really want to get that up out of your body. And how do you do so when you're in the confines of a cell with somebody else? Well, like I said, when I got to classification one time, I was in a cell with somebody who had never been locked up before, bitching and crying about mommy not answering the phone and wanting to go home. And I just need to post this bail. All I need is just somebody to sign for me. I don't even have to put up any money, this person was saying to me. So I was already dealing with my own set of calamities in my cell, knowing that I was going to be in there for quite a while. But in classification, you can stay in there for a couple of days, sometimes like up to three days, maybe even more, depending on available bed space. In this one particular night, I'll never forget, I'm trying to sleep, and all of a sudden I hear from another cell, just a mere couple of cells away from mine, Hey, yo, did you do that? Was that you? That was you? That was you. Hey, that's you. That's coming out of your body. I don't remember what the other party was saying in response to that. Probably some sort of a deeba deeba deeb. I just, I, I got the, I got the ga I got, I got, I got the past the gap. And then all of a sudden you hear the feet shuffling. Oh God, get him off of me. 
Just a mere couple of cells away from me while I was in classification one of many times, I heard a guy get his ass kicked behind having the really bad gas while in jail. <laughs> not prison. And folks, make no mistake of it, this is something that probably happens more times than you can even imagine. This was quite a ruckus that was taking place a couple of cells away from mine, and of course, all of a sudden, here come the guards running in, trying to break up this party that's taking place. Dude kicking and screaming on his way out. Oh my God! How could you put me in a cell with somebody like that? What did you, oh my God! I mean, it was quite entertaining for me at least, having no sense of stimulus or any kind of stimulation back here in classification. But both of these two would end up getting hauled off, and that would be the end of that situation. But it's this story that really poses, what do you do when you got really bad gas in prison? You've got to pass it. Is there proper etiquette for doing so when you're confined in a cell with somebody else? Well, folks, I'm about to tell you a couple of ways that you can try to showcase proper etiquette, to try to showcase that you know something about serving time, and this isn't your first rodeo. I imagine somebody watching this video might be getting ready to go to jail or prison, and this is a valid question that might be in their mind, and if it's not and they stumble across this video, it certainly would be at that point. If you're locked in a cell with somebody and you've got really bad gas because you've been eating processed, disgusting food that's been destroying your insides, you know, two things come to mind in relation to what you could do to try to pass that gas in a respectable manner. And the first is, you could sit on the commode, the steel throne, that porcelain Harley Davidson, and you could pass the gas in the toilet all the while pressing that button that's damn near sucking the junies off of your body. I was looking at my audio levels, make sure, making, trying to make sure it wasn't peaking as I'm sharing this with you. It's like 7 o'clock in the morning. My neighbor's sitting outside with her freaking dog. And she's got to be hearing me sitting in this shed talking about farting in prison. What the fuck? Sitting on the steel throne or the porcelain commode and pressing that button for all that you can is certainly a good way to try to pass that gas and get rid of that smell uh, the best way possible. Another way that you could do it is you could actually back your ass up to the bars or to the corner in the crack of the cell door, back your little booty up like Beyonce right there in the corner of that door and try to pass that gas that way. Now, there's other ways that you could try to pass gas and other ways that dudes will pass gas in prison with absolutely zip zero regard for anybody else. It's pretty disrespectful, these type of ways. You've heard of drive-bys where somebody's just walking by, just passing that napalm aerosol can type of gas. You know the type that I'm talking about, that really hot gas that almost singes the hair off of your ass, that those silent but deadly ones? Joe, what are you doing? <laughs> Man, you could be laying in your bunk in an open dorm setting and somebody could just be walking by unbeknownst to you, just holding a conversation with no, hey, yeah, just nobody. Hey, yeah, yeah, I saw that game last night. Yeah, I saw that score too. Hey, that was crazy. And the next thing you know, your nose hairs are curling up. What? Oh my God, who did that? Oh my God, and you've got no idea. Because there were numerous people who were walking by at that time. Some people will do so in an open setting when they're around a bunch of people. It almost sounds like a skunk. I don't know if a skunk makes a sound when it sprays uh, whatever it sprays. And then it's every man for himself. Hey, oh my God, who did that? Hey, who did that? That was you. Oh my God, that was you. Who did it? They always say the first one to smell it's the first one that dealt it or something like that. The first one that smelt it is the one that dealt it. That's a philosophy to keep in mind when you're serving time. You know, ultimately, if you've got really bad gas while you're serving time, the, the number one thing you want to do is try to get as far away from everybody as you possibly can. You know, if you pass that gas somewhere way, way away from everybody and you're 
Yeah, let me, hey, let me get this joint up off of me right here, boy. Hey, don't come over here. Don't come over here. That will actually be a respectable manner. If you're able to get outside during rec and you can get away from everybody that way too. I've seen dudes <laughs> on the basketball court passing gas in the middle of a basketball game, posting up down in the pa- Oh my God, who did that, dog? We just trying to play 21. <laughs> Yo, gas in prison or jail is a serious offense uh, because in terms of respect, passing gas the wrong way in the wrong time, wrong setting around the wrong people or person is absolute disrespect. Now, this as well, you could be in a cell with somebody way bigger than you who just don't care, got zero respect for you. And they just going to pass that gas laying right there on their bunk. And they ain't going to care nothing about what you think about that because they're going to be looking at you like you a punk. And then at that time, it's going to be up to you how you handle that situation. Whether you're going to try to strap up, tie up the boots, or you're just going to lay there and, hey, that was a good, hey, hey, boy, hey, that was, woo, that was, hey, that was you. Yeah, I know that was you, all right. That, that was a good one right there. I've seen dudes who pass gas with the, the baby powder and use that as some sort of a air freshener, right? Pass that gas, get that up off of them real quick, then hit that baby powder. You got to try to be respectable with your gas in prison. And one thing's for certain, no matter who you are, you are certainly going to have a case of bad gas while serving time. There's just no way around it. The food that you eat in there is going to cause it and it's going to be up to you how you handle that situation, whether you sit on that throne, whether you back it up like Beyonce to the cell bars, whether you get away from everybody or whether you try to commit a drive-by or just don't care at all and end up like that young little whippersnapper that I heard. I didn't see it because we were locked down in our cells getting his ass kicked Because he was passing gas right there around the wrong one at the right time. You got to be careful with the gas. It's deadly. It can be seen as a weapon. I've never seen it nor heard about it. But I imagine that somewhere, somehow, it may have happened. You know, you hear about people who create stink bombs. This is a weaponized fecal matter in prison, putting feces and and PP up inside of a milk carton to try to squeeze on a CO or a passing prisoner. I wonder if gas could be weaponized as well. Potentially seen or, you, you know, potentially something that could get you a charge. Well, so, Dan, that was you. Hey, boy, I just walked right into that. You getting a charge for assault, a guard might say. Or maybe in some cases, It could be used to keep somebody up off of you. Maybe you got the IBS, you know, and you just got really bad gas and somebody's trying to bring the problems to you, trying to bring that bung bung to you. But if you just can't stop pooting, I'm not trying to fight you. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to fight. You got it. I don't know about those last couple of things that I was sharing right there with you. Just a couple of hypotheticals. Anyways, folks, that's all I got with this video. Just wanted to share this with you. If you've got any stories or any experience with bad gas in prison, hey, share it down in the comments section. I'd be curious to hear what you have to say and also what you think about what I've shared with you in this video. It's been a long time since I've been able to share a prison story with you guys, a really long time, and I'm sure I could have done a lot better. Forgive me, I'm a little rusty, but it is my hope to be able to get back from time to time, probably on the weekends at the very least, to sharing with you some memories down memory lane of old Joe serving time and some things that I remember from it. You got to keep in mind, it's been like 10 years at this point since I've been locked up. Hasn't it? I got released in 2015. It's almost been 10 years. Damn. I've been home for a long time. Anyways, that's all I got, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, please leave a like and a comment on this, letting me know exactly what you thought about this. And as always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace!